Wanna make manual recaps with motion, voiceovers and edits that hit? Cool, this video is for you. I'll show you exactly how to do it step by step in Premiere Pro. No paired plugins, no confusing effects, just simple tricks, free assets and clean editing. We'll animate your panels, add sound, build custom transitions and bring your scenes to life. Even if you're a total beginner, you've got this. Alright, let's dive in and make your manhwa move. Alright, let's start off by taking some screenshots. All I'm doing is pressing a hotkey as setup and every screenshot automatically goes into a designated folder. The app I use is called Shutter, although it's just Mac only and if you're on Windows, you can use ShareX. Both of these apps are totally free and very easy to use. I'll drop the link down below for you to search later. I'm just gonna keep taking more screenshots. Oh yeah, before I forget, you should definitely read the manhwa beforehand. Knowing the story and understanding which characters are important helps a lot. That way you can focus on capturing only the key images and the scenarios that are happening in the story. Also try to imagine how you'll piece them together later. For example, if you have an, a, a big panel with a lot of action going on, what I usually do is capture the whole panel, then I capture the small background characters that are happening in the panel. That way when I'm editing, I overlap each of the background characters on top of the main panel, like a pop-up of some kind. Once you're done grabbing screenshots, the next step is writing a script. This part is mostly manual, just read through the manhwa and jot down a rough draft that follows the original story. Don't overthink it, but make sure that your names and places and characters are exactly the same and have the correct wordings and the spellings. Then you can run that rough draft through ChatGPT to clean it up a bit and finally pass it to 11 labs or any AI narration software that you have to generate the voiceover narration. Now the software that we will be using is called Premiere Pro. Uh, the reason is that it's cheaper for me. I think it's around 19 euros with a student discount. You could use Final Cut Pro or other editors too, but I find that Premiere gives me more control and makes it easier to automate things like adding effects. Now let's just go ahead and open up Premiere Pro. Once you've opened up Premiere Pro, the very first thing I usually do, just out of personal preference, is switch the workspace to effects mode. The reason is simple, since we're mainly adding effects to images rather than editing traditional videos, this layout keeps everything we need in front of us. When you switch to effects mode, make sure your project panel isn't sitting at the bottom. If it is, just drag it up to the right side so you can clearly see your audio and image files without having to dig around. Let's begin by creating some folders to keep everything organized. In Premiere, they're called bins. Press the little folder icon and name one folder photos and the other audio. Then go ahead and import your manhwa images into the photos folder and your audio like voiceovers or music into the audio folder. Now let's just drag your images onto the timeline. I usually start with 5 or 6 images at a time. It helps keep the pace steady and gives you more room to work with when aligning them to the voiceover. After placing your images, drag in your audio track and drop it underneath. For this tutorial, I won't be aligning everything perfectly since I'm just showing you how the editing works. But normally, you'd want to time your visuals properly with the audio. If you notice the screen width or composition doesn't match YouTube's video size, go to the sequence setting at the top, change the pixel dimensions to 1920 and 1080. This is the standard HD format for YouTube. Press OK and if you see an error message pop up, you can safely ignore it and click OK again. Let's start the actual editing process. Click on one of your images in the timeline, then drag your marker, also known as the playhead, to the very beginning of the clip. Now go to the effects control panel and open the motion section. Click the clock icons next to both position and scale. These are called keyframes. They let Premiere know you're about to animate something. After that, drag your playhead to the very end of the image. You can use your arrows keys to move precisely without jumping to the next clip and then adjust the image, position or scale. For example, you could move the image upward or zoom in slightly. When you play it back, you'll see a basic motion effect. And just like that, you've made your still image come to life. Next, let's add a background. Now you could go online and download a moving background, but I've got a better method. Hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and drag the image up to duplicate it. 
select the lower image, go to the scale setting in the effects control and increase it slightly so it fills more of the screen. Then go to the effects panel, search for Gaussian blur and drag it onto the lower image. In the effects control, bump up the blurriness until you get a nice soft background that blends perfectly with your main image. You can play around with other settings too if you want a different look. The result is clean, subtle background that helps your top image stand out. One of the best things about Premiere is that you can save this as a preset. Double click on the Gaussian blur effect, right click it and choose save preset. Give it a name, soft background blur or anything and now you can reuse it on any image with a single click. Let's take another image and try something different, something with a bit more energy. Search for transform in the effects panel and drag it onto your image. In the effects control, you'll see a bunch of options. For now, we'll use two of them. First, let's move rotation. Set a keyframe at the start and another at the end. Then rotate the image a little. When you play it back, you'll see how it adds some movement. Now let's play with the opacity. Imagine a dramatic moment in your video. You can fade the image in or out to match the emotion. Start at full opacity, then dim it halfway, then bring it back. It adds that cinematic touch without much effort. Alright, now onto one of my favorite effects. Duplicate your image once more, and now this time, select the top image and go to the opacity section. Change the blend mode to screen. Now go into position and set a keyframe. Shift the image just slightly, don't go overboard, just move it by a tiny decimal. A nudge here and a nudge there. When you play back, you'll see this subtle ghost-like effect. It works especially well for fast-paced scenes or anything action-heavy. Now let's look at overlapping multiple images. Choose three images and place them above each other on three video tracks. Increase the scale slightly on all three of them to make them stand out more. Depending on your audio, bring in the second image when the new scene begins. Then do the same for the third. Extend the length of all three images so they overlap until the final image ends. Now go to the beginning of the second image and add a keyframe in opacity. And at the end, reduce it so it slowly fades. Do the same for the third image, but keep its final opacity higher than the second one. This creates a nice layered transition, giving the feeling that time is passing or that your focus is shifting naturally to the final image. Speaking of focus, let's add a little emphasis. Search for drop shadows in the effects panel and add it to your image. You can adjust the setting like distance, direction and softness until it looks the way you want. It helps make your final image pop and adds a bit of depth to the composition. And yep, you guessed it, you can save this as a preset too. Just right click it and save for later use. Alright, so now that you've got your images lined up, your voiceover is clean and everything's flowing nicely in the timeline, it's time to bring it all together and polish things up. Let's start by heading over to mixkit.co. This site is a goldmine for free assets, overlays, transitions and sound effects. No sign up, no copyright issues. Just search for something like dust particles, download whichever overlay fits your vibe and now drag the file into your project panel in Premiere and place it above your image clip in the timeline. Select the overlay, go to the effect control panel and enter opacity, change the blend mode to screen. This removes the black background and leaves you with a clean floating particle or a light flicker effect. It's double but it adds movement and atmosphere to your static image. You can switch overlays depending on the scene, like warm light leaks or glitch overlays for intense moments. Just don't overdo it, one or two per scene is enough. Next up, transitions. Premiere has some good built-in transitions. A personal favorite is a whip pan. In the effects panel, search whip and drag the whip pan effect between two image clips. You can shorten or stretch it depending on how fast or slow you want it to feel. These work great between action beats or when switching scenes. And if you pair with the whoosh sound effect, this hits even harder. Which brings us to one of the most underrated parts, sound design. Seriously, don't skip it. It brings still images to life. Head back to Mixkit or Zapsplat or Pixby Sounds, all free. Grab a few effects, whooshes, sword slice or paper flips, ambient background noise like wind or city hums. Pull these onto your audio bin and then drop them under key moments in your timeline. Right where your transition hit or when something emotional or dramatic happens. Now let's quickly add a bit of style using Lumetri color. Just some basic color grading to give you a recap, a more polished cinematic look. At the top of Premiere, switch to color workspace. Click on one of the clips in the timeline. 
On the right, you should see Lumetri color panel. And if not, go to Windows, Lumetri color to enable it. In the basic correction tab, bump the contrast up a bit, lower the blacks and raise the shadows just a bit to add depth and separation. Once you like the look, just right click on the clip, hit copy and select your other clips. Right click again and choose paste attributes to apply the same grid across the board. Simple, fast and everything stays consistent. Here's a little pro tip, use markers. As you're going through your timeline, hit M on your keyboard to drop a marker wherever you want to add a transition, sound cue or visual effect. You can double click the marker and label it like wash hair or fade in hair. It helps you plan out your effects while you're editing or reviewing your voiceover. And hey, if you've got a little budget to work with, check out Envato Element, Motion Array or Film Crux Packs. They've got some insane effects, transition, overlays and sound libraries that'll take your recap to another level. Totally optional, but really powerful if you want to go all in. Alright, when you're happy with how everything looks and sounds, it's time to export. Go to File, Export, Media, choose H.264 as the format and select the preset YouTube 1080 HD or 4K if your panels are high resolutions, but normally you want to stick to 1080. Make sure to check render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality to keep everything crisp and smooth. Click export and boom, your manual recap is finished and ready to upload. So that's it. You started with a bunch of still panels and now you've got a cinematic style recap with motion, color, sound and energy. You made it yours and that's the key. Keep experimenting, keep editing and remember, think like a director but edit like a fan. Now if this helped you, please drop a like, subscribe and let me know what you're working on in the comments. I love to check it out.